Clima Media's Mining Weekly is speaking to Corey Diar, the CEO of Hydrox Holdings, a company which has built this proudly South African advanced alkaline electrolyzer. It's proved the concept. Now tell us how you can go commercial and tell us about this. Thank you, Martin. We're very proud to uh, have accomplished this. It took us some years and a lot of effort, but at last we've managed to build a demonstration unit. This is the one you see over here that can prove that we can build a local electrolyzer that complies to stringent international standards and which can compete with whatever alkaline electrolyzers are out there. As a matter of fact, we believe we can even go better than that. And it's proudly South African done here in this country. 70% of what you see here is locally uh, sourced, locally manufactured. Some components are still imported, but we're very proud that we can make a meaningful contribution towards the green energy and the green hydrogen, which is so much in demand now. And this must be a first for South Africa, maybe a first for Africa? Yes, uh, I'm proud to say that is indeed the fact. It's the first for South Africa and it's the first for the whole of Africa. We know of no other company that locally produces any alkaline electrolyzers. And normally when you say alkaline, we think platinum group metals out. Give us this advanced alkaline electrolyzer magic that includes South Africa's PGMs. Yes, indeed. Um, what we use here is also some uh, platinum in the electrodes. We, we, unfortunately, we do not know the exact composition of that as that is proprietary information, but it is using uh, uh, PGMs and that's why we get this very, very high current density per square centimeter. We're aiming at this stage at 700 milliamp per square centimeter, which is quite high for an alkaline. They normally operate below 200 milliamps, so we're very proud of this. And tell us about the cost competitiveness or your thoughts on costs with the commercial entry. Yes, uh, it's always a big thing. You know, you've got two things uh, that's uh, having a problem or an effect on, on hydrogen, and that is the one, the availability, and then the cost of the hydrogen. Cost, primarily so, because it's dependent upon the electricity use. If you can get, and you can source electricity from uh, solar and from wind, uh, that would have a m huge effect on bringing the cost of hydrogen down. Our aim is eventually to get down to uh, $3 per kilogram. I mentioned dollars because that's the international standard. But our aim is to bring it down very, very affordable. And then also to give you a unit where you want it. The whole idea is to have this unit here scale up to one megawatt and then to have it all built into a container, a 40-foot container. So we can deliver it to you where you want it. And this makes a huge difference because installation costs, conditioning costs are a major factor when you start uh, employing electrolyzers. And we think this is the way to go. And not far from here, up in Lipopo, in Makarakwena, we saw a hydrogen truck roll itself out. This is possibly symbolic of mines starting to move towards hydrogen. How can you help the mines with this? Oh, this is an absolute necessity for the mines because suddenly now they can get access to electrolyzers. The big thing was all along, where can you get electrolyzers and also which is affordable. The problem right now is there's such a demand worldwide for, for electrolyzers that there's a huge uh, delay in delivering these. This can be up to two years and longer even. And even the bigger companies now are also scaling up to megawatt. They, they're going to three megawatt upwards. They don't want to install the smaller units. And this is where we think the niche market for us is to give you a containerized unit of one megawatt for starters, but we can also go bigger, obviously. Right now, the only thing that keeps us back is the capital cost and the cost to develop this. But you have got this for normal temperature but I can remember a time when you were working flat out on the deft trademark and you guys were world beaters there. You got a world award and then suddenly you went off and you focused on this. Give us the background to that and when you'll come back to deft. Thanks, Martin. No, it was a matter of necessity. We didn't have a choice because the deft would take another two to three years to develop and we were running out of funds. So we had to make a decision and suddenly there was worldwide, you know, a demand for hydrogen and we decided let's use our expertise, all the knowledge we've accumulated over the years and build a local electrolyzer. This one does employ a membrane, make no mistake. The one that we uh, patented and which made us uh, very famous and where we presented worldwide 
is in fact a membraneless that divergent electrode flow through technology membrane that is a unit which is called deft we've got that trademarked and this is still um, getting a lot of attention we have uh, huge corporations approaching us now and say can we get involved in this can we revive this and, and we're doing studies right now to see how quickly can we get this, because this has got the potential. This has got the potential to drastically lower the cost of hydrogen because it doesn't employ any membranes. It takes out a lot of issues. And if you look at the, in, the medium temperature range up to 250 degree centigrade, you can in fact now use the, 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 uh, the, uh, the accumulated heat and all the electricity that's in there, the energy that's in there, instead of getting in external energy, you can use that the, the energy, the kinetic energy in that higher heat, and, and that can bring down your, 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 your total um, electricity per kilowatt. We believe to the vicinity of about 42 kilowatts per kilogram, which is really amazing, and this is what's getting attention now. But once again, we're busy with that, and we're looking towards sponsorship to take that further. But our biggest priority now is to get this baby on the ground ASAP, and we believe in a year's time we can roll them out. And funding is a huge issue. I mean, you guys have done brilliantly uh, with your funding. But if you're going to go commercial, how are you going to fund yourselves? That, that, that's always the issue, uh, Martin. We, we've uh, funded it up to now uh, through private persons like ourselves, the directors have chipped in monies and some of our shareholders put in monies. And um, we were very grateful towards Shell for putting in that uh, grant for us to develop the DEF technology, which we did. But now we're looking towards uh, commercializing. This taking this now to the next step, scaling it up. That will entail serious monies. We talk of in the vicinity of 50 to 60 million rands. That's some serious monies we require. But we are approaching various companies in this country, also abroad, to assist us with this venture because now we can get the, the low-hanging fruit quite easily with this unit, take it up. We've proven the concept. It works. Now let's commercialize it. The other alternative is, which we're also investigating, is the uh, AIM, the Alternative Investment Market in London, which is a spin-off of the London Stock Exchange. And we're looking at that very seriously right now. Back to Screener Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Corey de Yar, the CEO of Hydrox Holdings.